authorized to go. Monday, November 19th, 28th, County Commissioner's meeting. Call a meeting to order at this time, and our invocation is going to be on Brother Hayes. And after that, our pledge will be by Ellie and uh, Kenzie, am I correct? Kenlaw. And we appreciate y'all coming tonight. We stand for our prayer and that's it. Mm -hmm. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for thy eternal presence and the way that you bless us and take care of us in our county. We ask you to visit the hearts of our commissioners and give them guidance and wisdom to make the decisions that's best for our county. We ask you to bless our county officials and every citizen in our county. Father, we ask you to protect our county and keep it safe through the holidays that are before us. For these things we ask in our Savior's name, Christ Jesus, and all of God's people. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God,
year at the end of life and to observe this month with appropriate activities and programs. On behalf of the commission, it is an honor to present this to you back uh, hospice. I know every family in here that has had to use hospice and take advantage of such a wonderful idea and an opportunity that no one until they've experienced it can appreciate it as much as my family has. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful and I know everyone else is to expect these commissioners. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to share for the benefit of the group the, the why behind the date, and that is so that um, employees can be paid their longevity payment and holiday payment by the th before the Thanksgiving holiday, so that Black Friday um, you know, weekend mm -hmm. they can shop and that type of thing. And so October thirty first was has been in effect from years before that personnel policy was adopted. It, it was it was in effect before that, but um, I just wanted to kind of share with you the why behind that specific date. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, ma'am, go ahead. Um, and what had happened in August of 2013, um, I did apply for two positions, and I was chosen for one of those positions. But during that time, in adult services, it was federal money. So 
August of 2013, the government shut down for a period of time. And during that time in 2013, we have pushed my date back all the way to November instead of August. So had, yeah. they put, had they approved your uh, hiring you for that position? They um, they had actually gave me a letter for the hire date of that position, but after the interviews were done, um, I knew that I had the position because I started out as an intern in um, May of 2013. We do a hire date because it's based on payroll at the beginning of the payroll cycle. Do we not? Yes, sir. Normally it's the, it's the, the Monday at the beginning of a payroll. Mm -hmm. A cycle. So, so the the longevity checks are dictated not by the time of employment, but from the actual a set date. That's what I'm asking. So, if a person, person in January, then they will automatically have to come to the next year. I'm saying some of them set. I know some of them just set where it's the date of employment is when you actually. Determine where you've been there for five years. Yes, sir. It, it's basically a person is required to have uh, obtained five years of service by the October 31st uh, date. Continued, so they, service. continued yeah. Continued so service. they were there for 10 service dates. What I'm asking if a person was hired in January, January that not this of 2013, let's say since we're in 2013, that means they would have to go past. By the third of October, it wouldn't get the date, so they would have to wait and go a full year round. So if if a person there. began in January of 2013, uh -huh. then this year would be the first year that they would receive the budget be because that'd be five years. They would have met the five-year requirement prior to October or by October. So, so her thing was she was hired in when it was in November, November of 2013. 3rd, 2013. So she misses it. She's, she missed it. She has not made the She has not made the full five years. So, I'm saying, so everybody has to follow that same scenario yeah. yes, sir. to go around that full five year loop to be a completed five years Correct. when it come October 30th. Correct. Yes, sir. So in some, some cases, you may work six years. Yeah, I have to work six years. Some cases, you work six years before you get it. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I missed it by three days, so the, I won't be able to get it until next year. Five and five. Three, six, three. Yeah. 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 Okay. <coughs> yeah. More conversation. situation arises right you mean on their hard day yeah right i mean if it's that close we need to speak mm -hmm. things up right. well that's the reason i asked the question if she was interviewed in august and she was hired in january of 2013 she mentioned that to me last week that's the first i'd heard of that so I don't, i'm not familiar with that yeah I, yeah in august um, i applied for a child protective services position and adult protective services position but the government was shut down, if you remember, in August of 2013. Mm -hmm. And the money comes from, from a government money from four adult services. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't able to start then. And um, Ms. Miller was program manager then, and she sent out emails to see why my start date was in, in August and of that year. But they had to push it back to November until the government was back up and running in November. If you know, my start is like the same day that the government opened back up, 11 4. Matter of interest to commissioners. Yes, I have. Yes, I attended a Mid Carolina Council of Government meeting this, this past Tuesday. Uh, roundabout on at 41 410 will begin in 2019, hopefully, be completed in 2019. A decision will be made in uh, 2019, hopefully, in January. Seven from 
from Airport Road to LL Ferry. And it has been set to four lane 87 from State Road 11 to 7476 beginning in 2024. And hopefully all of that what Elwell? You said from here, Airport Swing. Yeah. What's the date? Airport. I won't know the date. I won't know the date. Airport Road down to Airport Road down to Hopefully the meeting in January. State Road. To seventy four seventy two. State Road eleven. State Road eleven. Seventy four seventy six has been set to, to begin in 2024. Oh, 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 it began in 2020. We, we said 4 lane on the seven, 7 4 lane to Sears. on the, on the I, was, I was Well, we sent that letter. Mm -hmm. Highway 11 to 7476. Now, hopefully in January, we will know if, they, if they're going to do begin at Airport Road to Elwell Ferry or to, to the left. Well, I reckon that's what. Do we need to send another yeah, letter I think to make sure that. That's what I was asking. For. I know that, that we picked up from 56 points to 90 points, and 90 points is, is I sure think really a, a high point to uh, to get it done. But still have to have a meeting in January before I know exactly what that. Hopefully, they'll do. Do we need to send letters from the Raven and them so they can have their eye on it? Yep. That's what I'm asking. Mr. Martin, I sent a letter of appreciation for the response that we've had back from them and and really thank for the consideration going forward. <coughs> 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 service here in Blake County. 
think Mr. Martin, I think it'd be appropriate to send a letter of request and um, what we have to do to, uh, to initiate getting a um, provider into our county. It's, it's come up several times and we have a resident here that would really love to be here in our county and has chosen to live in our county. We'll prepare and, he, and he has every person that's necessary in every field in his offices. Where is he located now? He's in Lumberton, he's in Whiteville, and I think he's got four locations. Harry Wood and William County. Wow. Any other matter of Guidelines that we have to follow, 
and based on your income and number in your household is how we charge you for your services. No question. Uh, and those services, um, will they fall or the cost? Do you have any, any, any money? Mm, money? We, that's what we use the state, few dollars that we get from the state is for those that are because you think you think about it, if they are medical and they're necessary to prevent a a epidemic or something, why do you worry about it? You save a lot more anyway. So. Right. And what we do is, if um, someone does present, um, we do make a suggestion to them. We can't force them to mm -hmm. But we can recommend, hey, you may qualify for social services to get okay. Medicaid. Oh, okay. So we do make that recommendation and give them the information. And it's up to them whether they choose to go and apply for Medicaid. Okay. They don't have to pay this bill in order to be seen again. I'm sorry. They don't have to pay in order to be serviced. No, sir. We cannot deny you based on your inability to pay. Okay. We, we bill on a sliding fee scale all the way down to zero pay. So these are people who have been deemed able to pay some. Um, you know, toward their health care. And so you know, we try to take that if we can. But again, we don't deny services based on them to pay. The only reason I asked that question is I didn't know what some people may not be going back to get services just yeah. simply because they owe people. No, sir. No, sir. Um, our contract says we cannot deny you based on your inability to pay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> The other item is our debt set off. These are accounts are $50 or greater, and we attach those to um, your North Carolina tax return. We send that over to finance, and they in turn um, send it to the state to attach. And if you file a tax return with the North Carolina Department of Revenue and you do get a refund, if there is an outstanding debt, whether it's us, whether it's the water department, whether it's the tax office, um, we can collect those funds. I don't have that. I don't have that. I didn't see it. I didn't get the package. Okay, well, I guess we have to break that next month. I'm sorry, I thought both of these had been sent over. Okay, my sincere apologies. Okay. All the explanation we've done up, it's the same thing as just over $50. I don't know what it is. Okay, what it is is the um, debt set off. Um, the county chose several years ago to set up um, the debt set off program, which means that if you, anybody that has an account with county government that is fifty dollars or greater, whether it's the tax office, whether it's the water department, and or and or the health department, that if you have not paid your bills, the same thing as the debt set off, the debt write off, but it's we're able to attach it to your North Carolina department. Dollars. More than two dollars. Yes, the problem you have again, I'm, my thing is, if people have medical issues and things that can affect the mass, now we're going to tell them, now we're taking this money so they're not going to come and get care. And so now we have TVs and everything else is multiple. Oh, no, ma'am, we, we're, still, we're still providing you services. We cannot deny you. Mm -hmm. These are folks, we have sent them statements and they just have not paid. They still continue to come get services, they just choose to not pay. They have signed a payment agreement with us saying that I will pay you $5 a week or $5 a month and they just do not, do not pay. The, the question I'm asking, this, I've been here, I have never heard us come in with this set off on that. Have we approved this prior to this time? Yes, sir, we, the last one we did was in 2013. What's the year? We, and, the reason, and the reason why we have not done one since 2013 is because when we changed over from our um, avatar accounts receivable to Cure MD, when those accounts were put on, they were a mess. Um, accounts were incorrect, and we have spent over the past two years getting these accounts cleaned up to make sure that when we do this, that we are giving you accurate figures. So these are fees that's been approved over a period of time. Yes, sir. And we so did. So now we get ready to start collecting from people. We've been trying to collect from those folks for the last several years um, because we have been sending out statements to them and a copy of their payment agreement that says, "Hey, you signed this payment agreement. We'd like to get a payment." <coughs> We can't force them, we can't threaten them, and we cannot tell them they cannot have a service. Now, the reason I asked the question, I was, did the legislature pass a statute that would allow us to do this and yes, not sir. attach it? Is 
Yes. Not new no, sir, this is not anything that is. No, sir, the county's participated in this for, for numerous years. Um, as she indicated, the tax office, the water department, the health department, the various agencies. It's an agreement with the state, or it's a program with the state. And if a person is eligible for a tax refund, or if they win lottery proceeds, then those funds will be intercepted to pay their bills due to the county or to a municipality or whomever. I, I just have a, what is wrong with trying to collect what people owe us? We do. We attempt to no, collect. I'm, saying, I'm trying to ask, understand oh. what is wrong with if people owe us. What's wrong with trying to attempt to collect our money? I mean, it's a business, people. That's right. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I know they they passed some legislature statute mm -hmm. where anyone that's associated with the state agency with hospital I bills and all kinds of stuff. If you're part of the state medical association and state alliance, now they got where they can attach your bill. But that bill was just passed. It ain't been something that's been going on for years. And I'm asking, is this the same bill that they we just passed been, a couple years ago? No, sir. This was passed several years ago. Okay. Since probably 2010. Ten. Was, more, more than that. Earlier. I'm just, I'm just asking. I know they did that. Anybody who's yeah. part of the state yeah. health plan, they have nothing now where they can attach. Mm -hmm. And that may be something that got modified in there, but this is new medical. Okay, see, that's the same. We got a motion by Mr. Peters. How much money are we talking about? How much are we looking at? I'm in. We're looking at $21,008.99. It's roughly 85 clients. Roughly, I just looked at it and about four pages. Yeah, I don't have a problem collecting. I just want to make sure that people don't come and get our service. Oh, because. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Like I say, in our consolidated contract, we cannot deny you based on your inabilities to pay. And we're following the guidance by the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services out of an agreement addendum and you know, the guidance on billing. Mr. Martin, do we need to amend the, the minutes? The, the agenda. the agenda to permit this to go in there. That's what I'm saying. So it'd be a legal action. If we, it's not been a part of the agenda. Do we need to that, that, that amend be, the agenda to put this in there? That, that may be That's appropriate. Thing uh, to do. appropriate action. Motion to take. I'll withdraw one motion. Motion to take. Thanks. We have a motion to take by Mr. Peterson. We have a second by Mr. Trigger. Any further <coughs> discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved.
No, no, so, because they were no longer under the Office of State Personnel. Okay. So um, we're based on the county's tax basis, what our salaries are set at. So that's something to look at. You think we get anyone to? I imagine so, yes, ma'am. We had a candidate about six months, six months ago. Yes, sir. It was real close, and it was pretty yes, much the salary benefits package at the last minute. So she was making the same thing in another county in a non supervisory role. That's okay. something we need to consider, um, Mr. Chair. Because you look at paying contractors coming in and you can have a court in more time. Okay, oh, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Let's see. Yes, Mr. Chairman. This is the uh, 2018 the County Health Rankings that's uh, published by. Um, the collaboration between uh, effort between Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the University of Wisconsin Population Health Institute. Pretty much, they look at every county in the in the nation, and um, the, uh, they explore the size and nature of health differences by place, race, and ethnicity, uh, and uh, how states and community leaders can take action. Um, so that's the source of the data. Um, we uh, and the counties are ranked, uh, of course, it's one to a hundred. And uh, Blake County has moved up some. Uh, I think just a few years ago we were at 99. And in this case, the higher the number, the worse it is. Uh, the lower it is, the better, of course. So Bladen was 95th uh, in the most recent pub uh, publication. And um, uh, the other five uh, below there was uh, 96 through 100 was Columbus, Edgecombe, Vance, and Scotland. And um, as you can see, except for Com um, Columbus, I mean, um, Edgecombe, these counties in the south central part of the state, in the darkened area there, uh, we're in that group. And then there's there's a group of counties in the, up in the upper northeast as well that um, uh, are similar. And the top five counties that did the best in terms of uh, their health indicators was Wake, Orange, Camden, Union, and Mecklenburg. They're one through five. Uh, so. Uh, they, they didn't hazard to guess or put information out as to why uh, this indication may be, but one of the things that they look at is the per capita expenditure on you know, public health and, and health care in the, in the various counties. So, there's not um, too many good gardens around here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the various indicators here. Um, and the data does go back. Some of it, like State Center for Health Statistics, when you're getting information that, uh, together, can be as, uh, about the most recent you can get, maybe two years old. But over time, patterns like infant mortality, for example, five-year uh, averages, uh, you look at that set a single year, and you begin to get the trend. And that's that's what the you know, putting the agencies that put the information together do: premature death, uh, poor or fair health. Um, low birth weight, uh, smoking, uh, obesity is no obesity epidemic in the nation. You know, nationally, we're not alone in that, but that's really high. Um, inactivity, you know, alcohol, and uh, the uh, other uh, teen births are still pretty high in that. Uh, uninsured mental health providers, as, as we've all found out in, in discussions in the opioid uh, task force. You know, there's a real big need, not just in Lake County, but in this region, you know, for mental health providers. Mm -hmm. um, we've got most people, when the subject comes up, talk about East Point, but they just can't be, you know, all things to all people, I'm afraid, and, um, and so on. So there's a great need for mental health uh, providers. Uh, children in poverty, that's that's another big one there. How do we fix that? I mean, it's over a third of the children in, in the county are living in poverty. Violent crimes and uh, injury. So uh, these these are uh, a dozen or so of uh, indicators that uh, it's used uh, to uh, put the uh, <coughs> county health rankings together by Rob Wood Johnson and the University of Wisconsin. So um, we uh, also use uh, we measure these uh, as you all know do the community health assessment. Uh, it's done about you know, every three years. And um, we, uh, we just have this there, and also the state of county health report. And uh, Marianne Valentine just reported uh, the state of county health report, the annual report to us. 
And that's sort of how we're doing on an annual basis based on what we said in the community health assessment. And uh, so definitely need to look at, at the uh, review the strategic plan in and around these issues mm -hmm. and work to continue to improve the health of adults and children in Blake County. What did you suggest we do to improve it? Any suggestions? Well, yeah, I, I think uh, we, need, we probably need a, a group to focus on the, a strategic plan and, you know, to develop a plan and work the plan. I'm, I'm not sure it's that we've really paid as much attention to a strategic plan on how to improve these various health indicators over time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that, I mean, that's the way to do it. Clearly, some of these other counties uh, are doing it, doing it well. And somebody say, well, they got all the money in the world, you pour money pour money on it or throw money at it, but that's not necessarily going to get you where you need to go. You need to look at best practices and, um, you know, and, and strengthen your strategic plan and uh, look at best practices uh, throughout the state and the nation in terms of what works and, you know, and what, uh, you know, how it's improving in other areas. So you're suggesting that we get a committee together on health improvement? And <coughs> I think that would be a good idea. We, um, uh, to, to really focus on a strategic uh, plan and hold, hold the uh, health department accountable for at least working that strategic plan and uh, either telling you why it worked or didn't work. Give us reports back and so forth. At least once annually, maybe twice a year, to, to report to this body and to the Health and Human Services body mm -hmm. as well. I have a question, Mr. Um, Chair. On preventable hospital stays, is it eight, is it days or and what is it is that, I'm sorry, what's your question? Uh, preventable hospital days? Mm -hmm. Preventable hospital stays? It did not define it in there. In the, um, the link that's at the very end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there's a website. That's the website we can go to. And what you need to do is go down there and click on what is our county and what it does, it brings it up. But it doesn't say one, yes, ma'am. More, so often, more often than not, though, it's preventable conditions. Uh, diabetes, for example. You know, diabetes can be reversed. Yeah. I mean, not just prevented, it can actually be reversed if every, an individual does all the right things. Okay. And, you know, um, yeah. Diet, exercise, mm -hmm. and those kind of things. It could um, be repeat visits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, high blood pressure is controllable. Uh, a lot of a lot of individuals have uncontrolled. Uh, some of them comorbidities. You know, they have high blood pressure, diabetes. You know, yeah. and uh, you know, overweight. Okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. So it's so more often not related to that. What did you just call that? Um, yeah. Comorbidities, more than one disease at the same time, okay. or or uh, a health issue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like us to really think about this health improvement committee. Get a, a group together to improve the, the, uh, the health of our county, our citizens. Maybe we need to get a, a committee together to uh, work on that. It's, it's the only way to get past by. <clears throat> really get it in force and, and have a working group on uh, implementing best practices, as he said. Uh, that's, that's the one we was at. Um, we hadn't had a class. Lately, but we got one scheduled in December. Yeah, uh, Mary Ann and her, uh, she has a new staff member now for a small health education department. They do a lot of things, you know, like promoting good health, mm -hmm. uh, smoking cessation, diet, improving your diet, exercise, uh, weight control, those kinds of things. Um, clearly, more uh, more can be done. And I, I applaud the efforts being that was done. Like we moved from 99 to 95. I mean, that's progress. Yeah, that you know, is. That's, it's that's progress. That's so, progress. You know, can't be the cause of, of that. And we need to look and see how that happened, what was done during that period of time. Let's just tell you off the most of the way we uh, put together a health improvement committee for improving the health of our citizens. I'll say. We have a motion by Mr. Bullock. We have a second by Dr. Mangoins. Discussion. In discussion. I, I think that Mary Ann and them has already got that thing together. I could be wrong. But Mary Ann does have a group. They had a healthy, yeah, a healthy plate. Yeah. Healthy plate. Yeah. 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 We can look at that and, you know, see what they're doing. See if we need some help with it. Yeah. Yeah. Come do a more more like to do a I like the Okay. Well, I don't want to. We shouldn't, we shouldn't, uh, Rep yeah. Yeah. I withdraw that. Mm -hmm. well, we don't know what they don't do, though. 
Yeah. They may not have the strategy, and they may want to add, add people to their yeah. And we can review our strategic plan mm -hmm. and, and talk to Mary Ann about maybe you know bringing you know some information to the, mm -hmm. to this board. Mm -hmm. Look at other other counties and see how they. And she did come once. She did. Doctor Mungo, you want us to have your name? Yes. I will mention that to Mary Ann tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Invited board appointments. Bay Tree Lakes Fire Service District 2. Real point. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Bisson to reappoint. Second by Mr. Peterson. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Kind of faculty protection team. Motion to second. Got a motion by Mr. Peterson. We got a second by Mr. Bullock. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Keep Blade Beautiful, three people. You're still working on it? I don't know. We should add it by now. Don't that. Sandra's still a name, but I forgot what it was, so I'll make a motion to it. Oh, who are we missing? Oh, it's right there. We had East Blade, we had West Blade, and she had a third person. Three, three more. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Wow. We went from three that was in the city. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, you take a second. Yeah, that's the one I talked about. Maybe county needs to get involved and get an employee leading that thing or helping to lead that thing. Because at one time it was I thought pretty it was successful, and, and now it's getting hard, harder and harder for people to do it. So we really need to look at that from um, bring it as a county led thing, at least a county employee office. We had um, employee Doug, wasn't it? Yep. See a lot of things. Good job with this. That was part of her job script, I think. We got a motion to table by Mr. Peterson. We have a second by Dr. Mungoy. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. And uh, Mr. Martin, Mike, Mr. Peterson said I think we'll go to the next level. See if we can get somebody else to get them on. Uh, planning board one. That's mine, so I want to put a story lines, L-Y-O-N-S. And I do use contact with number three. Uh, okay. We've got a motion by Mr. Cogdell for Corey's Lions. Corey. 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 Corey Lions. Okay. And a second by Dr. Mungoins. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Worship Review Board. Uh, I recommend that we appoint uh, that. Down, get my name right. Graham and Macon, and replace mine with Gloria McLean. Second. That's three. Yeah. 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 And replace mine. Oh, okay. Lorenzo Graham. Lorenzo Graham, Tara Macon to reappoint and replace Art Mon to go with Gloria McLean. Okay. And she says she will be happy to. Okay. Second. You've heard the motion. By Dr. Mungoins, second by Mr. Bullock. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So the White Lake Planning and Zoning, ETJ. I'd like to appoint Cammie Collins. Second. We've got a motion by Ms. Trivet. Uh, Cammie Collins. A second by Mr. Bullock. Cammie. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Okay, advise board appointments for this right here, December 17th, 2018 board meeting. Ammon Fire Department, Firefighters Relief Fund Board 1, Bart Advisory Board 5, Bay Lakes Fire Department, Firefighters Relief Fund Board 1, Feed and Evasion Advisory Board 3, East Arcadia Fire Department, Firefighters Relief Fund Board 1, Economic Development Commission 4, Health and Human Service Agency Advisory Committee 4, Hickory Grove Fire Department, Firefighters Relief Fund Board 1, Kelly Fire Department, Firefighters Relief Board 1, Library Board 3, Lisbon Fire Department, Firefighters Relief Fund Board 1, Personnel Advisory Board 2, Car Hill Fire Department, Firefighter Relief Fund Board 1, Tubblemore Fire Department, Firefighter Relief Fund Board 1, White Oak Fire Department, Firefighter Relief Fund Board 1, and Yes, sir. What is the difference in a talking about firefighters, right? Relief fund board and a service district. 
fire service teachers. That's what we been doing was fire service teachers. We changed the name or what? Something about money, there's money there. Yeah, the, the service district is what we consider the general fire district. That's where you collect the taxes at. Yes, sir. And the relief fund is a is a program that, um, if I'm not mistaken, is the program that allows them to participate in the retirement system, uh, contribute monthly, and then when they turn a certain age, I'm not sure if it's 60 and have 25 years of experience, 50 or 60 and have 20 years of experience, then they're eligible to uh, do the retirement. And maybe some other. Do you know anything else about that? It's a very small amount that they receive. Um, they file for it annually, and I think the most they get is like $1,500. It's, it's a very small, it's not anything retirement related. Okay. All right. it's, it's set aside if, if they have a death on the board or something of that nature, they can use that money for things of that nature to help with those things. I think it was oh, used okay, for yeah. um, when the, Little Allen Boy died at Tar Heel. They okay. used some of that money for that. All right, thank you. <laughs> And I may be wrong, but it seems like I heard this. I don't know if Eliska Town got away from uh, the volunteers helping assist them with some funds, and they have suffered suffered in volunteers too. All the all the districts don't go into the relief fund. And, uh, it's been hard to get volunteers in a lot of things. But, uh, Mr. Martin, thank you, Mr. I'd like to review the calendar with you for the remainder of November as well as December. And just point out this uh, Thursday and Friday offices are closed in observance of the Thanksgiving holiday and I hope you all have a, a wonderful Thanksgiving. The Elizabeth Town White Lake Chamber of Commerce Christmas Parade will be held Sunday the 25th at 3 p.m. <coughs> here in town. Um, on Friday the 30th, the Employee Appreciation Luncheon is scheduled between 11 and 2. We, are, we run into a, an issue with the location we um, had hoped to be able to have it at the Ag Agricultural Center as we normally do. We were told last week that the Disaster Recovery Center time frame is going to extend beyond the November 28th date that was originally scheduled. So our backup location that we're looking at is the Elizabethtown Presbyterian Church. And so we um, need to get that finalized and as soon as we have, we'll communicate that with employees and everyone. Mr. Martin, is yes, sir. Thomas Martin paying that? Well, we thought, we thought about that, but it's it really, um, is probably not and as far as parking you know there are two restaurants there now and we just really hated to to uh, 